Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I am once again your grateful host, Kevin, and today I am especially grateful because I get to chat with someone who I've, I've actually been looking forward to chatting with Nadine for quite some time. Um, she was on a podcast I listened to, I think it was over a year ago at this point, and it was before I'd really gotten my stride here on this podcast, and like, she was kind of like in my in my head, in my sphere of awareness, and we finally get to talk from across the world today, so... Let me stop rambling excitedly about Nadine Hack and introduce you to Nadine Hack. I'll read you a little bit about her. And trust me, it's going to be a little bit because there's a lot. She is known internationally for her pioneering engagement leadership work. Nadine advises businesses and nonprofit executives, heads of state, all kinds of other organizations. Listing all of her accomplishments and honors and awards here would take us, quite frankly, all day. And that's saying nothing of her ongoing work across the world. Um, most importantly for today, we're going to talk a little bit about her her origin story, her past, present, and future. And I'm certain that we'll touch on the new book that Nadine is still in the midst of writing called The yes. Power of Connectedness. Yes. So Nadine, thank you for finding time, making time, being here, chatting with me. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Kevin, I'm delighted to finally connect to you when we've been kind of circling each other for a while. Yeah. And um, since you asked me about my origin story and in the context of coaching, mm -hmm. um, when I was a very young child, my bubby, which means grandmother in Yiddish, mm -hmm. suggested that I ask the bakery for the price of today's and yesterday's bread. Mm -hmm. Then I should buy the day old loaf and put whatever pennies I saved into a jar we kept on top of the refrigerator to give to people less fortunate than we were. Hmm. I learned early on that passing it forward is the right thing to do. And I've now shared that guiding principle with my six grandchildren. So my origin story might be called lessons from a grandmother. <laughs> I didn't I didn't recognize at first that my coaching style is kind of like what a loving grandmother would do. Open space for exploration without pressure. Hmm. Um, I've been told by those I've coached that I create a safe space and I ask gentle but probative questions that enable them to unearth primal issues that are underneath whatever specific concern they've asked me to help them resolve. Hmm. And intimacy comes from safety and mm -hmm. feeling safe enough to become intimate with oneself is at the heart of helping anyone self-discover through coaching so that they can grow into deeper self-awareness that allows them to understand and work with others in richer, more fulfilling ways, not leading them, but instead allowing them to find their own golden nuggets of truth that are already inside kind of the job of a grandma it i was um honestly i'm i'm feeling a little nostalgic for my grandma who passed away many years ago but she 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 made it well into her 90s which is just i've just one of the great gifts i've experienced in my life is having her around and i would always make time to go over and spend time with her we would play rummy and pinochle yeah, and like we would sit around and talk and she would tell me about the books she was reading and i would tell her about the books i was reading and she was always so and i didn't know it i didn't know it at the time but what the what you described the way that you coach and your experience with your grandmother is exactly what my experience was with her in that she was so i mean she had raised seven seven children of her own and a, an innumerable number of grandchildren <laughs> and you know the, the tree the tree expands from there um mm -hmm. but she, it's almost like she had she had learned and i think she, from from the stories i've heard of her in her younger years as a mother and even earlier she always kind of had a knack for this but that yeah. ability to just naturally, almost effort, seemingly effortlessly create and hold space in which you move yeah. into. And it's almost like she becomes not a chameleon because she was always uniquely, profoundly, strongly her. And yet mm -hmm. she always had something for you that was for you. She always allowed you to feel and gave you the space to feel that. And it yeah. really was. It was safe and it felt exciting and also curious. It had all the attributes of a beautiful human connective experience. And so, yeah, it's... I'm feeling very nostalgic and loving for my grandmother right now. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy that I conjured that up for you. <laughs> oh, it's so lovely. And yeah, talk talk a little bit about that, how you do that in your coaching, because I feel like that's that is that 
creation of and holding of space is it's it gets I know that word gets tossed out there quite a bit now. I think there's a greater awareness of the importance of space um, yeah. rather than filling in the gap between people in order to build a connection. Sometimes holding the space for holding that connection to happen naturally is what is what really sparks a human connection. So talk a little bit about that in your coaching practice and how you yeah, pursue it. And, and I actually even call it often sacred space. Because it's that space where you're really present and by being present fully, owning the whole of you, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, just mm -hmm. being showing up, you kind of are offering an invitation to the other person to know that it is safe for them to show up fully. Mm -hmm. and, and as my coaching practice became more mature, I discovered that asking open-ended questions are the best way to guide people into knowing what they really want to explore. So I might start with, what do you think is the most important issue we can discuss to help you? And follow with similar questions like, why is that vital for you? Do you know what you'd like to achieve in the short, mid or long term? What does your ideal situation look like? Hmm. What would help you clarify that? You know, so I'm just kind of giving them an invitational, I'm, I'm trying not to lead them anywhere. Yeah. I, you know, I've prepped and I do have ideas of, from what they've told <laughs> me about them, but I try not to impose that. And it's really fascinating to then see how often people can keep hidden from their conscious knowledge what their unconscious may truly sense, if not fully yet know. Hmm. And um, like, I'll just give you an example of how it can go in such a different direction. And in, in a coaching session, after asking that first, what's most important to you question, a senior executive from a multinational corporation replied, well, I must bring our EBITDA margin, for those of you who don't know, that's earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, to at least 12% by the third quarter. Hmm. So knowing his situation and having already established a secure level of trust during our coaching process, I said, we certainly can talk about how you'll do that if that's how you choose to use this time. But is it okay if I pose a personal question first? And I always ask that because I don't wanna pry that the, the mutuality requires a kind of give and take. And, and with his explicit permission, I then asked, well, how does your wife feel about you having traveled 200 days of this last year when you've just had your second child? i.e. 55% of your time. Yeah. And this tough as nails guy broke down sobbing. Oh. He explained that he'd felt the need to maintain a certain level of lifestyle for his family. Mm. But we were then able to delve into how he could downsize his financial expenditures for them while he upsized his emotional expenditures with them. Mm -hmm. which he then started to do. Mm -hmm. And his wife sent me a bouquet of roses. Thank you <laughs> for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. Well done. And it, it really is like when you, this is one thing I love about the, the entire coaching industry and the coaching experience is because it's, it's largely very simple, very obvious things in retrospect. But in the moment, you need someone like a coach who has the skill and the care and the patience and the, and the ability to, kind of like just scratch at the surface and move move behind whatever fronts people are putting up and i love that you were you viewing what he offered you as an indicator of what might be behind it mm -hmm. and asked for permission to go behind the curtain a little bit mm -hmm. and based on having built and again i love that that you highlighted that step having built that trust already Mm -hmm. this executive felt comfortable enough to let you behind like one step behind that curtain. Maybe you were just peeking inside. It wasn't anything necessarily mm -hmm. hugely profound or hugely intrusive, but you got that permission and consent based on trust and were able to ask the question behind the question, yeah. which, yeah. which, which opened everything up. And 
I got to tell you, those moments, I mean, it's, 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 it's why every coach who coaches does what they do, because those moments yeah. are among the most beautiful moments of human connection that I've, I've ever even been tangentially related to, let alone a part of. Absolutely. Totally. They're magical. It's why they, mm -hmm. I call it sacred space when you're really with each other. And, um, and there's been so many times when people have said things to me like, I never told this to my best friend. I never mm. told this to my spouse. I never actually even really said it to myself. I don't know how you got at this so quickly, mm. but it's because of that kind of um, patient willingness to really read all the signs, not just the words, mm -hmm. but all the signs of what somebody is conveying and offer them the opportunity to explore my, what might be going on inside of themselves. It mm -hmm. doesn't guarantee that everyone will pick up on it, nor do you ever want to force it on anyone. You know, the, you, you, you don't want to open a Pandora's box of perhaps traumatic life experiences for someone who doesn't have the emotional resources to handle that. Mm -hmm. But by offering the invitation and just taking it step by step, back and forth, reading each other, you, you do create the possibility that something truly transformative can happen. Mm -hmm. And while you're building that possibility, you're also building building the support structure that will allow that possibility to grow into fruition. Because I think you you so astutely identify the importance of not forcing. Because yeah. sometimes you'll, as a coach, you get, I mean, you get very skilled over time at being able to read people and kind of read the tea leaves. And you can kind of see where a conversation is going or where a relationship is going a few steps or a few sessions before you actually get there. And one of the key attributes to every great coach I've spoken to is the patience to wait for the readiness. Because once they're ready, the readiness is a part of, it's a part of the entire process. And without it, you risk, again, doing, not only not helping in the way you want to help, possibly doing damage and setting your client, your relationship back farther. And so that Absolutely. patience, I know it gets, gets get paid lip service quite a bit and people talk about being patient, but it is, it, it, it is maybe the most vital attribute to demonstrate in that relationship because that patience is is central to the space and the permission and the consent mm -hmm. and the vulnerability and the intimacy and the empathy that will be the the bricks the building materials of the bridge that's forming between you you know and i'd also say that what undergirds that patience is mm. um always holding a deep sense of respect for whomever you are with Hmm. Um, and you've said I've worked with some quite famous people mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, it's not I try always to treat every human being I interact with whether it's the bus boy at a restaurant or a prime minister exactly the same you know rather than kissing up to people who are you know on a higher level and I won't use the curse word of you know pooping down to <laughs> uh, people yeah. who are at a lower level which which sadly too many people do yeah. I try my best to treat each person with the same level of respect and by respecting them that means I'm also going to respect what their own healthy boundaries are and mm -hmm. some people don't have any healthy boundaries and so I have to help them protect their <laughs> boundaries because they don't even know what boundaries are <laughs> but in in respecting them I'm never going to push them to go to a place I'm going to invite them to consider the possibility of exploring something that could liberate them, but that's as far as I'll go. 
And in the way that I offer it that way, gently but clearly, it really does allow people more often than not to just open up. Mm -hmm. And come through the various personas and projections they might have, you know, between them and the rest of the world and anyone else they meet. I think one thing that really helps helps me to to ground myself in that like basic respect for another human being regardless mm -hmm. of who they are or who they project to be is an understanding that it's all it's all a persona whether mm -hmm. it's fame or fortune or parenthood or service or careerism or like all the different uh, like identities we have projected outside of ourselves it's all the same human reflex regardless of what shape it takes or how bright it might be in the case when someone is very a, a, a very a position of power or has great fame it's still the same human reflex they have the same you know protectiveness the same same projections Absolutely. and just connecting at the beginning of our journey with the human at the heart of all that and just letting things develop because really it's it's virtually impossible to beat down someone's persona to get to you know the, the, soft, <laughs> right. the soft human core that's that, that's an exercise in futility at best yeah. and just yeah. dangerous damage at worst but yeah. coaxing and allowing and holding a space for that human to come out from behind the projections and masks and personas that they wear maybe feel they have to wear and maybe often do have to wear just to do the things yeah. they want to do in the world that's that, I mean, that's that's the special sauce right there as far as i'm concerned that's that that's where the real that's where the real magic can happen and i, I love that i love that you again you called out a very important aspect of it grounding your patience and your work in respect for who they yeah. are as a human being yeah yeah and 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 mm. respecting difference and mm -hmm. recognizing that everybody ticks slightly differently mm -hmm. and <laughs> not projecting how i would do something onto how others should do something. I'm never prescriptive. I mean, I'm often asked point blank, should I take this job? Should I leave that? You know, should I, you know, go for the promotion? Should I leave my husband? You know, all you the full gamut. And I will never answer a question like that. That's not my job. That's mm -hmm. there. What I can do is help them think through what is it about that promotion that you feel will make you that makes you happy what is it about that promotion that frightens you what is it about ending your marriage or on the other end of the spectrum starting a relationship that mm -hmm. excites you that <laughs> terrifies you so that they themselves can find their way into their own answer Mm -hmm. Because my path is not your path, is not anybody else's path. And there is no one right way to do anything. Anytime any one of us makes any choice, there's always a trade-off. Mm -hmm. There's no choice that doesn't have its pros and its cons. You know, mm -hmm. every choice involves gaining something and giving up something. There, there's just no way around that. And so it's really up to each person to decide what's the right choice for me and, and, and to go deep enough into their own kind of awareness and, 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 and sitting with the problem. Also, like, um, I encourage people not to make rash decisions, but to like, especially on those big choices. Yeah. You know, I, 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 the only time I say anything prescriptive is when someone has already decided I am leaving my job, I hate it. I'll say to them like something like, in this economy, it might make sense for you to like quietly put out some feelers with some headhunters and have something lined up before you mm -hmm. leave your current job, you know, unless it's <laughs> so toxic for you that it's really hurting you. Yeah, you make sure it's the, actually the right decision, and whether it's made or not, you explore it together to yeah. give it some to to fully flesh it out. You know. Yeah. 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 And that's I love. Once again, you've said something I love. I keep I keep starting all of my sentences, but I love what you just said there uh, because I, I think it's 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 an important element of 
not being prescriptive because it's so tempting when you when you think you can see the next steps that a person can take and you have your own experience and you've talked to so many different people you have so much to offer and it's not that you're withholding that is you're choosing to offer it in a more helpful way a more guiding way and yeah. something that always helps me to to pull back whenever I start to get tempted to just be like oh let me just tell them let me just tell them what to do I can see mm -hmm. it it's so perfect mm -hmm. is that I don't want to steal that moment from them yeah I don't want to steal the Good power point. of that realization from them that illumination because that's that's the best part that's the that's the part that that it's the best part I said it, I said it right the first yeah, time it is no, the best I part and I don't want to steal it from them yeah I love that you've just articulated it beautifully you don't ever want to steal their power you mm -hmm. want to empower them mm -hmm. by allowing them to own mm -hmm. the insight the decision that might follow from the insight you know that that's such an empowering thing to offer a human being the ability to in and of themselves you know whether they're a child or <laughs> <laughs> you know well advanced years <laughs> giving anybody the opportunity to really discover themselves what it is they care about is such such a gorgeous gift mm -hmm. and, yes. and robbing them of it is really a, a thievery yeah and it's 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 really it's easy to accidentally do that when you yeah. especially when you're in such a position like a, a coach is in such a position of respect and skill and knowledge and experience and empathy like it's all mm -hmm. it's all right there and it's it's very very frightfully easy to put that mm -hmm. one foot wrong and steal a little bit of that of, of that power a little bit of that illumination mm -hmm. that revelation and mm -hmm. holding back and again that patience grounded in respect and letting it happen quite frankly naturally the way it's going to happen yeah. if you just wait long enough and stay engaged it's it's one of the hardest parts and it's one of the best parts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, um, shoot! I we're twenty five minutes into our chat. It feels like it feels like it's been five minutes or an hour. I'm not quite sure which. It's so delightful to be talking with you. Oh, I have like a couple more things I want to talk about before I let you go. I know you're at the end okay. of your day, but I want to talk okay. a little bit about. We've been talking about yeah, we talked about your 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 origin and like we've really talked a lot about your approach to coaching and how you coach, and we've really gotten into like some mm -hmm. of the some of the, some of the deep the deep knowledge as it were. Um, mm -hmm. But I do want to make sure we talk a little bit about this this book, The Power of Connectedness, yeah, which is sort of yeah. like how things are expressing themselves now and in the future. So talk a little bit about that. How's the book going? Do you have a release date for it? What's the oh, what's God, the heart I wish of the I book? could give you a release date. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's a journey like everything else. Um, uh, the book is called The Power of Connectedness. It has a forward by Des Archbishop Desmond Tutu. I've got permission from his family to use it posthumously. Mm. And in it, I tell stories from decades of insights about how I and others who I've worked with have tackled with overcoming the obstacles to have an honest connection with our inner selves. And from that place, being able to have profound relationships with others, everything we've been talking about. Yeah, And um, as you've said, I've worked with people in the highest level senior positions in enterprises from all sectors, corporations, heads of state, leaders of global nonprofits, academia, et cetera. And I've observed that the ones who are able to admit their own faults and or that their organizations are in some way dysfunctional and then mm -hmm. take action to fix those problems are the ones who earn the greatest trust from those they lead so they can actually affect positive change. And, you know, knowing who you are and learning how not to lie to yourself, whether you is a person, a family or a business, is the ability to recognize denial or avoidance when it's in play and put an end to it by owning up to what's real. So that's what I'm focusing now on the book and, as a grandmother, I feel this is the best legacy I can share. It's really that's when it comes down to it, we 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 are in a, to a large degree our stories, and our stories are the people we've we've touched or who have touched us along the way. And the yeah. the ability to to share that with as many people as possible 
um, whether it's you know your 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 family tree or the or the mm -hmm. global world tree, as it were. Um, mm -hmm. That's just that that that's exciting. I'm I'm honestly like, plenty of people are talk about books that they have coming out, but like having interacted with you and knowing a little tiny bit about you, I was like, it's a book of stories from Nadine. Where do I sign up? <laughs> just, just just talking with you now for less than thirty minutes. Um, I'm just I'm 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 excited for more. Are you gonna are you gonna read the audiobook version yourself? Or are you gonna you're gonna contract that I will, out? I, know I will. That's, a couple I will. Steps that's that's down the road. I will. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's excellent. Well, shoot. In the in I don't I want to respect your time. Um, although I, selfishly, I really just want to keep you on the line for the next couple of hours and swap stories. <laughs> I'll just have to have you back on for another part. Maybe, maybe as the book gets closer or there's a solid release okay. date, I'll have you back on and we can do this again because this has been delightful, quite frankly. And thank you. The feeling and is mutual. Before I let you go, where can people find out when the book is going to be available? Where can people find out more about you and your work? Where can people connect with you online? I know you have a website that people can go to. Do you have any yeah, social so media that you're active called, on? My company is called Because Global Consulting. Mm -hmm. And if you, it's, it's because.net is the website. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all as Nadine Hack. And uh, the only Instagram is Nadine.hack because I had to do that. But uh, Somebody else got there first. Hack, so I'm, I'm pretty easy to find. Good. And, um, you know, the email is on the website but it's admin at because.net so that's easy too you know yeah. it's i'm i'm pretty accessible um although as i say right now my auto reply will say i'm on sabbatical writing a book so i might <laughs> not get back to people <laughs> right away but i try my best lovely i'll make sure there's links to everything in the show notes and yeah i remember right. I, was, I sent an email to you at some point and got that but even though we were like sort of in the middle of you know hashing out the details here I was like is she oh she's in she's in the book cave oh okay okay so she's she's hearing me like she's available but she's not available it's like it's I, I totally get it and I'm beside myself excited to see to to see this book when it's ready and I'm just <laughs> okay this is gonna be I find myself stumbling into this because I'm both thankful and grateful for you who you are and what you're doing in the world I'm just I'm just impressed and admiring and just filled with gratitude for you and I'm also selfishly just grateful that I got to talk with you and like get 30 minutes of your time this has just been I don't know I feel I feel buoyed and all filled up so I guess I'm doubly thankful so thank you thank you Nadine um, this has been fantastic thank you Kevin that's a beautiful thing to say I, I take it in good oh lovely okay and to the audience out there you've been listening you were just you just heard 30 minutes of this or close to 30 minutes of this you know what to do next <laughs> it's fine whenever <laughs> whenever the book's ready for pre-order get on it Find out more about Nadine. She's she's delightful. It's great. And I am definitely going to have her back on this podcast again in the near future. So keep an ear out for that. And we will be grateful to talk to you once again very soon. Thanks, 